we've been talking about a number of themes. We talked about the theme of change, impermanence. We also have been talking about the theme of that which represents no change. It could be described as the one or the zero, depending on your tradition of practice. We talked about the parallel between one and zero. Uh, the one is <clears throat> the balance point between stretch and squeeze. The zero is the balance point between moving this way and moving that way, the center of the coordinate grid, the origin. They play the same role. <clears throat> zero is to addition as the one is to multiplication. The point being that we have contrasting activities. There's a way of multiplicatively affirming and negating. They're called stretch and squeeze. And there's a, <clears throat> a way of additively affirming and negating. One's called go this way. The other one's called go exactly the opposite direction and equal amount. The balance point is, could be called zero or could be called one. At the still point of the turning world, as T.S. Eliot put it, neither movement from nor towards. At the still point, there the dance is. But do not call it fixity, where past and future are gathered. We talked about movement, change, flow, and vanishing in the way that I like to describe things, my own technical vocabulary for describing experience. Any abrupt disappearance I call a vanishing. And when you label, uh, the label for that is gone. Something is gone. Any other aspect of change, any increase, decrease, Affirmation, negation, speeding up, slowing down, spreading, collapsing, moving this way, moving the opposite way. I refer to that all generically as flow, just to have a general term for it. One might say that there are two fundamental flavors of flow. If we consider that any kind of movement um, would be molded by an interplay of opposites, the Greeks lacked both negative numbers and zero. China had negative numbers, but no zero. It was only the genius of ancient India, their mental set, that um, could see that you could have zero as an authentic number. They called it shunya, or shunyata, which literally means emptiness. It's cognate to the Greek word kenos, K-E-N-O-S, which means empty. It's a Greek cognate to the Sanskrit word shunya, because the ka sound in Greek corresponds to a sha sound in Sanskrit. So shunya, kenos. Kenotic, as an adjective, meaning relating to emptying out, um, describes um, <clears throat> what God had to do in order to incarnate as Jesus, and it also describes what Christians were supposed to do with themselves in order to experience oneness with God, empty out, <laughs> annihilate the somethingness within, and that's called canotic Christianity, Christianity uh, based on the notion of um, <clears throat> that uh, a oneness, <laughs> henosis, a union in Greek, a oneness with God comes about through an emptying uh, of uh, the somethingness of self. Except the become God, uh, there's, this is tricky. There's two words in Greek that correspond to one word in 
Latin. The one word in Latin is deification. The two words in Greek are theosis and apotheosis. We even have the word apotheosis, meaning the very embodiment of something. Apotheosis means to become God in the sense of like the emperors of uh, the ancient world claimed they were gods. But theosis, as a Christian term, meant um, to um, uh, experience a, a direct participation in the spiritual source. But they become one word in Greek, in Latin, deification. The subtle distinction <laughs> is lost. Shunya, emptying out. Kenosis. It's the same in the East and the same in the West. If you want to have a direct experience of that, that balance point, that nothing, that very rich nothing, that very special nothing, that is the source, since that's the still point, how do you get to the still point? Many possible ways, actually. One of them, um, paradoxically, is to utterly surrender to the opposite of stillness, which is the movement and uh, the flow. We can think of movement as generated by a dialectical process of back and forth. I have mentioned a number of times in these talks uh, things that my teacher Sasaki Roshi Joshu Sasaki Roshi says, you can look him up on the internet. If you go to Mount Baldy Zen Center website, you can see pictures of him and uh, uh, find out about uh, his teachings. When I first translated for him, even though I had a very impressive background in Buddhist scholarship and many, many years of practice, I couldn't understand what he was talking about. Uh, I could mechanically translate it into English. Um, but I made a lot of mistakes at the beginning in translating. Um, and um, uh, one of them I remember, he said, Seyo jin wa chushō ni yōwai, which literally means Westerners um, are uh, weak in abstraction. Now, I thought, you know, that Zen was against abstraction. <laughs> so he must be putting down Westerners. So I mistranslated it, okay, as Westerners are too abstract. But actually, that's not what he meant. He meant they're not abstract enough. <laughs> My preconceptions about what Zen was supposed to be got in the way. What he was really saying is they're not abstract enough uh, to see that <clears throat> a gazillion things that they think are completely different are actually reflections of exactly the same thing. And what are the gazillion things that they think are different <laughs> that are really reflections of the same thing? And what is that one thing <laughs> that they are re uh, reflections of?